Disclaimer number one, video cameras hate me. Disclaimer number two, it's Nebraska. It's windy. All of my supplies are blowing away. But we're going to do this thing. Disclaimer number three, please forgive me for all of the dorky things that are going to come out of my mouth before I have actually thought of them. Hello, and welcome to the very windy edition of Retro Recycling, brought to you virtually from Bellevue Public Library. And, yep, it's windy. Disclaimer number four. Did I mention that it's Nebraska and it's windy? So everything's blowing away, including my camera. So today, we are going to attempt to keep our supplies from blowing away. I have supplies hidden down here that you can't see right now, but our project is the affectionately named Bunny Butt Project, which is very popular right now. Wind? What wind? I don't know what you're talking about. Welcome to the mechanical room, someplace that you're probably never going to get to see outside of our behind the scenes videos. That's why we're doing this. So, let's discuss the supplies that you're going to need to craft along with us, which is something I couldn't do outside because everything kept blowing away. Not that it's windy. So, first of all, let's take a quick gander at the Bunny Butt Project here so that you can get a good look at what we're going to be doing. retro recycling classes. The point is to use things that you already have around the house and things that otherwise you might throw away but that are perfectly good as art supplies. Art supplies are wonderful things. So let's first talk about the little terracotta planters that we put our bunnies in. If you have a terracotta planter, feel free to use it. If not, maybe you want to Follow the pom-pom instructions, make the bunny butt, and then plop it in a vase full of fresh cut flowers. Feel free to do that as well if you have a large mouth vase at home. Or if you are a fan of the little wee yogurts, then I know that people have been looking for projects for their yogurt jars. And all we did was we took a little bit of a terracotta reddish brownish paint, painted it, and it made quite a nice little planter for us. Optional thing is, this is a hot glue gun. I did use the hot glue gun on my project, but if you don't have one at home, no worries. Just use regular glue, and keep in mind that your drying time will be a little bit longer. You will also need scissors. Now, no running, safety first. Put those down, hey, I saw that. Put those down and then run. Okay, that's better. You will also need a little bit of scrap felt or some other sort of stiff fabric to make the feet out of. You will need two colors to make the feet and the little toe pads. You will also need to choose two colors of yarn. So go ahead, pick your favorite color because these don't need to be bunny colored. They can be whatever color you want for your bunny. And then I usually recommend using a white or a light beige for the tail. Yep, that's right. Everything just blew away. So I'm going to splice in the pom-pom making from my original test run through. And we'll see how many days it actually takes to film. And today all we're going to do is I'm going to show you really quickly how to make your first pom-pom without use of a pom-pom maker and you can vary the size however big or small your container is then feel free to change the size of your pom-pom but the way that I do it so that I don't need a pom-pom maker is I just go ahead and I do it around however many fingers that I want 
and I want a pretty big pom-pom for the bunny today. So I went ahead and wrapped it around four fingers. Keep them separated because as you go around and around and around, your fingers are going to want to get closer and closer together. And by the end of it, if you let your fingers get too close together, you won't be able to easily get your loops back off. So, just like I said, go ahead and keep your fingers separated and go around and around and around and around and do this for mm, the next five minutes or so. Just enjoy the nice day. Think about how much you miss the library. And just keep going. Like I said, my fingers are getting closer together already. And keep going until you have a really, really, really big fat swath of yarn on your fingers. Keep going and 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 going. So I slid that whole thing right off my fingers and then I'm taking my tail here and wrap it right around the center and then I'm going to take my scissors, no running, and I'm going to cut the long tail there and then to make it not slip, I Tie that around there twice and then pull it really tight, as tight as you can. If you're using some sort of compressed fiber yarn, you won't be able to pull it really tight without it snapping, in which case go ahead and use a regular worsted rate weight yarn or some other type of yarn or string, twine, um, because you pretty much won't be able to see this. Tie it as close to the center as possible. But like I said, it's very forgiving. And then I always go around in the other direction. And again, go around through the loop. I usually do it twice because that way it's not just going to slip like a single knot. It's kind of like a slip knot, double knot. And pull it. And again, go around and through twice pull it about three times is how much I usually do it because once you do the next step you're going to have all of these individual yarn fibers that if you don't pull this tight then they can easily easily be plucked out so now comes the fun part where you get to trim and uh, practice your hair cutting techniques on your rabbit so just go ahead and where those loops were, just cut them. They will be all raggedy, but it won't be a problem at all because you will then, once they are all trimmed up, and this doesn't take very long, and you can see how some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, and you'll be able to, if you're at home inside, do it over a garbage can outside, uh, the birds don't seem to mind making, using yarn fibers in their nests, and it's a good time for them to be having babies. So, let's go ahead and trim this up. So, outside, I don't even use a garbage can. I just go ahead and trim it. So, he is not very straight, but that is easy to take care of and just trim around in a circular pattern until you have shaved your rabbit down to the fluffiness that you wish. So I'm going to skip ahead just like in those old cooking shows and we're going to pretend that this is the pom-pom that I just... And now let's take a moment just to finish up your project. The last thing that you're going to do is to cut out the little feet. Now, let's have a serious moment and talk about bunny feet, because bunny feet are probably the best thing in the whole world. And you don't even have to worry about having a pattern, because the bunny feet can
can be traced out of anything that you have at home. This is one of my crafting secrets is that I look for something the size and shape of what I need and then I use that as my template. So go to your kitchen, get some snack food, maybe you have some nutter butters that are just the right size or maybe you have an egg, you could trace the egg. You could use the bottom of your shampoo bottle if it's that size. And then for the toes, you might want to go get your M&Ms right now and keep snacking because M&Ms make just the right shape and size for your toes. You will need six of them. And then probably a quarter would be the right size for the foot pads. And you'll need two of those. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this visit to our mechanical room today and your first retro recycling virtual class. So feel free to share your projects with us. We would love to see them. We miss you all terribly and we want to know what you're up to. So happy crafting.